Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. I hope you like automatic knives because we got 25 of them right here. Let's talk about it. It goes without saying that automatic knives are some of the fastest knives in the business, and that might be why you're after one. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you're in the market for an automatic knife, and we are here to help you. We divided this into three categories. First, we have the everyday carry automatics, then we have the outdoor automatics, and lastly, tactical. Anyway, without further ado, let's stop, jump right in talking about the Boker Alluvial. So this is a Justin Lundquist design, and he's known for his folders. And his folders are interesting because they usually have a front flipper or a top flipper. You might've seen the Kaiser Feist or the Civivi Lumi. But he makes a really great everyday carry automatic too. So this one, one of my favorite features about this is it's lanyard hole. So if you see, there's a little hole right here and it goes through to the back right here. So that way, when you have the knife facing the front, even if you have a lanyard on, it's a very clean appearance. There's very little, if any, hardware on the front. So it's a nice, good looking knife. And that's something I love about Lundquist designs is they are beautiful, but they're also functional. What I love about this is it gets you this nice section of straight edge right here. And that's like, if you gotta cut something hard, like a zip tie. And then if you're slicing an apple or whatever, you got a nice section of belly and then a very sharp point aided by this drop right here on the spine. Great for getting through tape. It's an everyday carry knife supreme, but it's an automatic with a cool designer and a cool story. And it's a Blade HQ exclusive and you can get yours right now at bladehq.com for $69.95. Next up, we have perhaps the most collectible automatic knife in the biz, and that is the Boker Kalashnikov. And this one comes in a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different blade shapes and a bunch of different sizes. This dagger is a Blade HQ exclusive shape and you see it on all the colors ever. And it is one of the most popular knives we have. In fact, I would venture it's either the Boker Kalashnikov or the Benchmade Bugout is the best selling knife at Blade HQ period. But this is, I mean, you can see for obvious reason why it is. First of all, the price is right. Going for about $50 on, on up from there, depending on upgraded steels or different finishes but a very nice handle that fits the fingers just right if your hands are about my size. And then all these different blade shapes, a very affordable price, a snappy automatic action, a good sound. It just keeps ticking. It runs with them all and you can get it to match anything you're wearing, any activity you're doing. It's a great everyday carry automatic. And if this is a little big for you, there's a mini. And if it's not big enough, there's an XXL we're gonna talk about here in a minute. The Boker Kalashnikov is very worthy of any pocket and it would be kind of dumb of us to talk about automatic knives without bringing up the Kalashnikov. Next up on that California legal front again, we have the Kershaw Launch 4. So this is the first of many launch series you're gonna see on the table today. The Kershaw Launch series is their automatics that are made in the United States. And you can see they have these flags engraved on the handles. And they use these CPM 154 blades, anodized aluminum handles, very premium materials, especially for the price you're paying. Launch 4 starts at $94.95 which is really great for these materials, this build quality and being made in the United States. And this one is very small. I've been told it's a glorified box cutter, which I think is a good thing because let's face it, most of our everyday carry knives are glorified box cutters. But look at the size of this pocket clip. Like it covers the whole knife because like it's not a weirdly sized pocket clip. Like we'll grab this other more normal sized knife. It's about the same size in pocket clip, maybe even a little bit smaller, but it's just because the knife is so small. And a lot of people in California like that because it gets them that legal automatic action. But a lot of people out of California who just want an easy access knife that has just a little bit of a point that can get their job done, it's very popular with those people. And I, I can really sympathize with that. Comes in a million different colors. You can even find some premium Damascus options every now and again. The Kershaw Launch 4 is a great knife. Next up in the launch series, we have the Launch 11. And if I were going to everyday carry an automatic from this batch, it might be this one. I really like this one. It fits my hand very nicely. And I especially like it because of how trim it is. So you can see straight through this handle right here, there's holes all the way through. And then on the back, it's nice and skeletonized as well. If you wanna do a lanyard, you're gonna have to straddle this little section right here. But that is very doable, but it's an attractive knife. It has these fun pivot collars. In fact, we even had an exclusive with a 20 CV blade a little while ago. That was very exciting. I, I think the Launch 11 is one that kind of flies under the radar. People forget how good of a knife this is all around, especially for its price, starting at 120. So USA made CPM 154 stock, anodized aluminum. 
It's built with the same materials as more expensive brands, but it's a very affordable price. And that's what I love about Kershaw in general. A lot of their knives have quality far greater than you would expect for their price. Next up, if you wanna go very premium, my favorite automatic knives come from Protec right here. I just love the way they feel. Like they do this type three hard coat anodize on their aluminum and it, I, like they, people have called it chalky, but I don't quite feel chalk. I just feel like a nice durable texture. But then if that's not quite enough, here on this run five, you can see it's got this knurling on the thumb area. So when you're holding it like that, it is easy to get a hold of. It's not gonna slide anywhere, even if you're sweaty or something. This one comes in a couple of blade shapes. I personally like this like worn cliffy cleaver reverse tanto modified point, <laughs> whatever you're gonna call it. Really great, and what I love about Protex is you see this pocket clip. I'm gonna see if I can catch that. The pocket clip is recessed and so are the screws. So it is an uninterrupted flow right into your pocket, making it so this just vanishes. You'd never see it. And even this one with the sub two inch blade on the Runt 5, it's an everyday carry knife. You can cut whatever you're cutting with it. It's not gonna give you any trouble at all, but it's perfectly built. It is, it's Protex through and through. Oh, by the way, this one has a MagnaCut blade. If you haven't seen our videos about MagnaCut steel and why that's awesome, check them out. But yeah, Protec Runt 5 starting at 150 at Blade HQ. And while we're talking about Protec, I want to talk about how pricing on and availability on Protec usually works. Protecs tend to have a couple things going. One, they're made in small batches. So every Protec is made by hand in California and it's done very carefully. So they're not a mass production company like you'd expect on a lot of these other brands. But also, they are artists. So you're gonna find stuff in different handle materials, handle finishes, blade steels, blade finishes. So you'll get something kind of basic like this where you get that anodized aluminum handle and a premium steel blade. But you might also get a, like a bronze aluminum handle with mammoth ivory inlays and a Chad Nichols Damascus blade that'll cost you four grand. They run the gamut of artsy levels and utility levels, but they're all built really well and if you find them on Blade HQ, buy them quick because they tend to not stick around very long. Speaking of Protec, we have one of the more interesting Protec knives. This one's the Magic BR1 Whiskers. And this one is fun because of this opening mechanism. As you see, this bolster is kind of knurled. So what you do is you take your thumb and you slide it towards the spine and then the knife opens. And it's a very different automatic mechanism because you're normally you're just pushing a button. So this is a fun, I would say conversation piece, you're at a party. Hey, what knife you got? Oh, I've got this one. Can anybody open it? In fact, when we had our grand opening party, we went around the party and see if anybody could open one of these and most of them couldn't. They're like, what in the world? How does this open? And our videographer who's over here doing camera switch had never seen it either. So I'm like, hey, check this out. What do you think? And he's just like, what? How do you open this? I'm afraid of this knife. <laughs> but you don't need to be, it's, it's a perfectly safe automatic. And this is the tuxedo variant, which I love with this ivory micarta inlay and then the black bolster. I, I like the black bladed ones more, but if you're a stonewashed kind of fella, that's great for you as well. And then that same pocket clip feature like before where it just flows right in. It's a really awesome knife and I think it's an automatic, but oftentimes you think automatic equals tactical, but this is an everyday carry automatic if I ever saw one. And they start around 199 but this particular one goes for 310 because it's got that special inlay and a few other fancy things going on. Next up, we're gonna talk about Benchmade and Benchmade makes some of the, some of the best autos there are in my opinion and in your opinion as well, Benchmade autos fly. This one's the Casbah. And I remember we had the blue one on sale over Christmas and it was a really great deal at that time too. Watch out for sales on Benchmade autos too. You see those occasionally. Um, but the Caspa I called the automatic bug out because it's got the S30V blade like the bug out. It's got this grivery handle like the bug out, but it's got an automatic action. And sometimes you'll think automatic equals tactical. But once again, automatic doesn't necessarily mean that. So a lot of people work in gloves and in gloves, a thumb stud can be hard to actuate and an axis lock can be hard to actuate, but you can get to this button just fine. So you just push that button and you're closed. It's great. It's a solid knife and it's got the secondary lock too. Now some people are very, now secondary locks are a bit of a controversial subject in the knife industry. Some people love them, some people hate them. I personally don't mind them on an automatic because I once fell over on my bike with a Kalashnikov in my pocket and my Kalashnikov opened. Didn't hurt me, but it hurt my pants and I didn't want to replace those. So a secondary lock might've been useful, but 
I mean, it has to be a very specific fall for it to go off in your pocket. But if you like that little extra layer of safety, get that safety lock that you can get on your automatics. Because that way, you just activate the lock, and then, nope, not open, and push as hard as you want. Benchmade Casbah is a great option. However, my personal favorite everyday carry Benchmade Auto is the CLA. And I like this one especially because of this G10 handle. It reminds me of the ones that are on the Super Freak. That one's a black and gray. This one's this OD green and black. I think it kind of has a camouflage pattern to it, and I just love the looks of it. It also, I also love the grip of it. And then a 154 CM blade. However, this year at SHOT Show, Benchmade announced a CLA with a Magna Cut blade, and that's very exciting to me. It's got a nice deep carry pocket clip, secondary action as well, and it snaps with the USA-made authority that Benchmade offers. Really a great everyday carry automatic. So those are our EDCers, in my opinion. Those are the ones I chose. However, you could probably squeeze a lot of these into the roll. But next, we're going to the outdoor ones. And these are the ones that I chose, arbitrarily, as outdoor automatic knives. It would be great if you're camping, hunting, fishing, hiking, whatever you're up to. And we're gonna start it with the Boker XXL Kalashnikov. So I have a bit of story for you. A while ago, I was a copywriter and the prototype of the XXL Kalashnikov came across my desk and I was told to write a description about it. And I looked at it and I thought, well, that's big. It's really big and that's kind of its entire personality. It's like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He's huge and that's all there is to it. <laughs> but <laughs> with this one, I have quickly learned that I am wrong. And I'm sure I'm wrong about Dwayne The Rock Johnson too. This has a lot going for it, and especially in the outdoor world, because you have a five inch almost, 4.75 inch blade, and that's as much as a lot of your fixed blades. So you're carving feather sticks, or I mean, I might even baton with this with that D2 steel. It's tough enough to take it. It's a great steel, it's a great knife. And I once said this, you could do a lot worse for a kitchen knife, because it's got a good belly, like you can slice with it. It, I mean, you don't think automatic kitchen knife very often, but I think automatic kitchen knife when I see the Boker XXL Kalashnikov. Really a big knife, but a really fun knife too. It comes in a few different blade shapes and it starts at $60 at bladehq.com. Next up, back on the Kershaw Launch series, we have the Kershaw Launch 1. And a lot of people would see this and they'd think tactical. Once again, that's the, that is the instinct we all think when we see automatic knife is tactical. But I think this is a great outdoor knife because I like a broad knife when the outdoors because the handle fills out nicely. It's in my palm, it's not just in my fingers. And look at this tall blade. So take the Kershaw Launch 11, for example, and look at the difference in blade thickness. They both have the same grind, they both have the same blade stock thickness, but it's just geometry and it's just physics. The taller blade like this is gonna get you a thinner grind and a thinner edge which is gonna be great for carving feather sticks or skinning or whatever you're doing. It's gonna slice really well just because of that tall flat grind. And then USA made CPM 154 steel and a nice anodized aluminum handle. This one's got the red button. This might be my favorite of the Kershaw launch series and it's a very affordable price too. Starts at 119.95. It's a really great knife. Next up, we're gonna make your grandpa proud because we're talking about Buck. So have you seen the Buck 110? Ignore the number one dad thing. I found this in this drawer over here in our knife library and it said number one dad. I don't know how it got there, but it's there and we're just gonna deal with it. The Buck 110 Auto is the Buck 110 through and through. It's got that 420 steel you know and love, that's skin more whitetail than you could ever imagine. And it opens with an automatic action. This was originally a mod actually. People would get these and then they would buy this kit online that allowed them to turn their Buck 110 into an automatic. And I gotta say, when I see this knife, I do not think automatic initially. I just think, I mean, it's a classic, but it lends itself well to an auto, especially because when you're hunting or something, it can be hard to get two hands to open your knife. But with this, you just push that button and it launches right open. Made in the USA, backed by Buck's warranty, razor sharp, super nice hollow grind for slicing through, slicing through skin, whatever it is you're doing. The Buck 110 has proven itself for nearly a century to be epic. And it comes in this version, which has the 420 steel, which goes for 199. Or if you want to step it up a little bit, you can go with the Elite version. I have the 112 Elite, which is the little brother, but you can get these same materials and configurations on the 110, which has the black G10 and an S30V blade. So you're getting that steel worthy of a snob in the modern era, but a very classic design and a nice smooth opening action. A long time ago, we did a week one Wednesday video. Maybe I'll bring those back, let us know. We did a week one Wednesday video where we were talking about what knives would go well with what movie characters. 
And they said the Buck 110 Auto Elite like this with the G10 and the S30V would be Dominic Toretto's knife. Which I think is kind of interesting because it's classic. It kind of has a, I mean, you could see this in the context of a Mustang or something, but it's also fast and edgy like Dominic Toretto is. Really awesome. And this particular 112 Auto Elite goes for 229 at bladehq.com. Keeping it buck, next we have the buck deploy. So the word deploy kind of suggests military, but this one is built like an outdoor knife. And let me explain. It's got a hollow grind like these two do. So the hollow grind, meaning it kind of curves in on the grind, gives you a very thin edge. It slices like a dream. So I'm thinking if I'm skinning, I would, I would take this all day long because it's got this nice pocket clip. It's gonna vanish in my pocket, not gonna snag on trees or anything. Don't have to carry up any more space in my belt. It's a very modern knife. It's got a boss heat treated 154 cm blade, anodized aluminum, secondary lock. It's a really solid knife for outdoor use. And I should know because I kind of have one. I don't have the full size deploy. The one I got, my friend Lee from Buck, one of their industrial designers gave me this one at Blade Show West. And I've been carving feather sticks with it. It, it glides through wood. I don't know what Buck is doing with their grinds and their edge angles. They are so nice. And this thing is super tiny. This is the California legal version. And one thing I love about this, I can get my full hand around that thing. I can go and carve and I don't have very much edge, but I've got enough edge to get the job done. And on full size deploy, you have plenty more edge than that even. You've got so much going for you in such a nice package. And the price is right too. It goes for $165.99 at bladehq.com. USA made, backed by Buck's warranty, backed by Buck's reputation that boss heat treated blade. It's a really great knife and I think it would excel in any outdoor situation. Next up, going from something a little bit bigger to something very small, we have the Kershaw Launch 9. So this is another California legal one and you're thinking that is not useful anywhere in the outdoors. But this is where I'm gonna tell you it is. Bird and trout knives. You ever seen those? They're often little tiny fixed blades with about two inch blades and they're great for like doing really fine cuts on upland game, waterfowl, your rabbits, squirrels, all that fish, because you don't need a huge edge. Sure, the edge on this XXL Kalashnikov, which is longer than the entire blade here, is great for skinning an elk or something. But if you have something small that requires a little more precision, sign me up for this Launch 9, because I would just come and pinch the tip right here, and I have great control over that. It's nice for like pulling out my, like, I mean, whenever I hunt rabbits, I always have to cut very carefully to make sure the rabbit doesn't have tularemia because you can't spread that, that'll kill people. Don't do that. So you gotta check the liver to make sure there's not spots on it. If I'm checking rabbit livers, sign me up for a launch nine. Next up, we're going to Gerber. This is the first Gerber we've seen on the table, but Gerber makes some really great automatic knives. They have a lot of military contracts, in fact. This one's the Propel. So the Gerber Propel has this Tanto blade, and I know a lot of people out there think Tanto blades are very tactical, and you know what, you're right, tactical blades, deserve Tantos. Tantos deserve tactical situations. These have piercing power and tip strength off the charts. But I think they excel really well in the outdoors as well. You get the same tip strength, so if you're like trying to pry bark off of a tree, or if you're trying to crack a rib, crack a rib cage on a deer or something, the Tanto's gonna do it fine. But also, that edge, still an edge, like you can still make feather sticks with it, and if you don't believe me, I'll make a, I'll make a short to prove it. But Tantos are great in the outdoors if you ask me. And I really think this one works well because in the winter time when you're outside, you first of all, you've got a coat, you've got a bag, oftentimes you have skis or a snowboard or snowshoes or something. There's a lot of stuff that you can get snagged on and that's where I would want the piercing power and the tip strength of a Tanto to help me get out of sticky situations. And also it has this really tall button. Let's see if we can get that contrasted as well as the safety. So if I'm wearing big fluffy gloves, I will have no trouble actuating the Gerber Propel. This one goes for $143.95. comes with an S30V blade and a nice milled G10 handle. A great knife. Next up, I was looking for a really nice survival option for an automatic knife, and the only thing that came to mind was Benchmade Adamus. This thing is a beast of a knife. And I know I say that so much, but this one really is. It's got a nice thick handle with this big old backspacer a crew wear blade, and if you don't know about CPM crew wear, it's a favorite in the knife industry right now because it makes a very fine grain structure and it is tough as nails. And I'm thinking if I was picking any knife on this table to baton with, it would be this one. If I have to split firewood and I have to use an automatic to do it, I'm gonna take the Benchmade Adamus or I'm gonna find a way to do it with rocks because I trust this knife in terms of indestructibility more than just about any knife on this table. 
very nice. With this axis lock, which my very limited knowledge in mechanical engineering tells me that the axis lock has the potential to be stronger than the button lock. Maybe there's a video that we need to make on that as well. But I see this as a survival knife because yeah, sure, sure it could be a tactical knife, but this nice draw point, this nice jimping, this handle that just fits the hand super well. This is a knife that you can throw the world at and it will just take it and it will get you out of whatever situation you're in. Next up, we're going to the Benchmade 9400. So if you've seen our video about the 940 Osborne, that one is an axis lock. It was one of the first axis locks and this thing has been around since I was in diapers. But this is the automatic version that just came out a couple years ago. And I really think that this lends itself well to an automatic. It's got the same anodized aluminum handles you're used to. And that automatic though, like we've talked about with gloves, gloves are the great equalizer when it comes to thumb studs and flippers. They are hard to work with. But with a button, it's a lot easier because you can just compress the glove between your thumb and the button and then the button runs. And it's got this secondary safety as well. So it's gonna be just as safe as your axis lock, but it is lightning fast on the open, let's see. Thing is super fast, super fun to play with. And what I've heard said about the 940 series and the 9400 falls in line very nicely is it is the slimmest knife where you wrap your hand around it and you think I can use this for whatever. So I think it's kind of in the same size and vein as this Kershaw Launch 11, but I see the Launch 11 and I think that's an everyday carry knife. Open my package, slice my apple. But if I have to scrape out a horse hoof, Sign me up for 9400. Like, it's it's built for it, and I really appreciate that. So those are our outdoor knives, and last, we're going to the section you've all been waiting for, and that is the tactical knives. And that is where automatics were born to shine, in my opinion. And we're gonna start it off with the budget-friendly Boker Strike. So the Boker Strike starts at around $60, and I love the Strike. It is my favorite of the Boker Autos. I have one, I made mine look all Mandalorian-themed. But for this one, I picked this Black Widow because I think it looks awesome with the red blade and the red accents. But it comes with a D2 blade, uh, aluminum scales over steel liners. You're getting a little bit more strength out of it. And this guard. So when I think of tactical situations, I imagine you're gonna be polite. You're gonna be thrusting a lot more than you would be seeing in a bushcraft or everyday carry roll. And that is where these guards come to play. You don't want your hand riding up on the blade and that is what the strike has for you. It's got this nice jimping here so you're not gonna slide up there either. It's just a great knife for tactical use but it's also a good everyday carry knife like what I use mine for. Nice automatic action. Whew. Snappy and red. Who doesn't love red? Next up we have the Kershaw Launch 8. And this one definitely borrows from the tr classic Italian styling designed by Matt Diskin and its point is pointy. Pointy as in it pierces very well. And I'm thinking as a nice smooth, dabby sort of knife, sign me up for this one. It's a really great one. It's got this anodized aluminum handle. It still has the guard that you'd expect on a traditional Italian stiletto, carbon fiber inlay, and a pocket clip. It's a very modern knife with the styling of those classic ones. Now is a good time to talk about classic Italian stilettos, however. So I have this one here from AGA Campolin and it is beautiful. I mean, it's, it's it might be the coolest knife we have here. Let's face it, it's really cool. It's got this cool lock system. It's handmade in Italy, brass bolsters, this very fun automatic action. It's really cool. And maybe in its day, it was the best automatic there was. But in the last 50 years, we've learned about anodizing aluminum. We've learned about coil springs. We've learned about particle steels. And I personally think in the tactical sphere, at least, the modern knives have passed the traditional stiletto in terms of tactical utility. Now this one's definitely cool. It looks really great. It's a great knife to carry on the day your daughter is to be married if you catch my drift. But I personally think for tactical knives, you're gonna wanna go with something a little more modern than the traditional stiletto. But keeping it Italian, we have the Protec Godfather. And this thing is like the same before, it's very, like it has one of the most needle-like points of any knife I've ever held. And it's long and it's got that full handle that you can choke up or back on. It's got these little guards. It's sexy, but it's also tactical. And that's what I love about these Protex is every single one of them just looks so good. And it's built for war. In fact, we did a video with Protec a little while ago where we talked about how there was a, ha a knife that was carried through tours in Afghanistan and then it came and was found in the rubble of a burned down house and it was still just firing like a champion. And that's the Protec way. 
And The Godfather is, I would say, one of the more iconic Protex because it takes that Italian stiletto styling that we know and love, that is super cool, but it gives it all the modern treatments you could ever want. And it shoots so fast. In fact, I want to say it was the Godson that was the fastest automatic knife we did. We did this thing where we built this chart to calculate how fast knives were opening, the automatics were, and the Godson won. It was that fast. Next up, keeping it Protect, we're going to talk about the TR5. And this one's standing in for the entire tactical response line. So the tactical response line started with the TR1, and then it kind of evolved into the TR2. Then my personal favorite was a new design, the TR3. Then the TR4 came out, which looked a lot like this, but just way bigger than the TR5, which is this one. And TR stands for tactical response. And as you can see, they are just built like tanks, like all the other Protex, but these are purpose-built tactical military police rescue tools, and they do such a good job. This one's got the S35 VN blade and the black anodized aluminum handle, secondary safety lock, and these ones go for 250 plus, depending on who, what, when, where, why, of all the various tactical response lines. If you're after a tactical automatic, I would say the gold standard and the knife by which all other are judged are the tactical response from Protec. Next up, we have the SOG TAC AU. So SOG is known for a lot of their folders and their autos, but this one is the first to use the XR lock as its automatic actuation action. So you just come and you pull this little bar back and you got yourself a knife. So this is the full size version, but there's also the compact and the California legal compact. The compact's my favorite. It just is just enough for my hand, but the California legal one's extra special because not only is it just enough for the hand, but it has that two inch blade. So it's the same handle as the compact, but instead of having to deal with like a two inch like this, where you may have if it's a three finger or three and a half or barely four, this one, you're getting an easy four finger grip on your automatic. Or you can go for the full size, but these are slim. So I'm thinking like it's an everyday carry automatic knife, something that I can just slip into the jeans and have ready for a sticky situation. I'm thinking the SOGTAC AU might be the one for me. It's got a cryogenically heat treated D2 blade, an aluminum handle, and it's a very good looking knife and it's a very slick knife, so it's not gonna chew up your pocket either. Great everyday carry tactical option. These ones go for $149.95 for the big ones and a little bit less for the smaller ones. Next up, Benchmade Claymore. So when we think of a tactical automatic knife, we're often thinking of something big and beefy and heavy and ready for the bombs to go off. And this thing, is as solid as ready for the bombs to go off, but I would not call it as beefy and heavy. It's got this injection molded grivery handle with these steel liners, and it is astonishingly light in the hand. It's very nimble. It's not gonna weigh you down. It's got a deep carry pocket clip as well. And then the CPM D2 blade, which is a very different experience from regular D2. That powder metallurgy changes D2 from a really good steel into a stellar steel. This one gets a, such a fine grain structure. It's tough as nails, holds an edge darn near forever. Really great. And I just love the looks of this guy. Very clean, very good in every grip you can imagine. If you're carving or if you're going reverse, I am, I have, I literally have no experience or no education or anything knife fighting. So I'm not gonna tell you this is good for knife fighting because I have no idea. But it's a cool knife nonetheless. Next, we have the Spyderco Autonomy 2. And this one, I put on the tactical line because there's something we need to talk about. We say the word tactical a lot, but I don't think we've ever really defined it. So for my purposes, tactical is a knife that is useful for emergency situations and helping people. So if that be somebody's getting mugged, if that means you're military and police, if that means you are search and rescue, that's a tactical knife to me because it is built from the ground up as a tool to help people. And that's what this one is because it's got this nice serrated edge made of H1 steel from Spyderco. And H1 is that rust proof steel that's not gonna do anything like that. And it's got the biggest button on this entire table. I like big buttons and I cannot lie. It is so good and so easy to actuate. And it's got a really tactile, actuation of this secondary lock. If I'm wearing huge gloves and I'm wet and I'm chasing down some boat that lost, ran out of fuel 30 miles offshore of California and a storm's coming in, I'm bringing my spider Kawatonomy because it's that good. It's just a great automatic. And I super wish that Spyderco made a lot more autos because their autos are next level. They are so good, but you don't see a whole lot of them. But I really like this autonomy 
And if you're looking for a rescue knife, check out the Spyderco Autonomy series. And then the last knife on the table, I save for last because this is one that a lot of our military service folks have seen a lot of. This is the Gerber 06 Auto, and it is often given to military operatives because it's well built, it's military grade, and it's been used for years and years. It's simple, it's easy to maintain, and it's easy to use for all kinds of stuff. It comes in a Tanto variant, comes partially serrated, you can get G10 versions, comes in a bunch of different colors. We actually did a video called the most prolific automatic knife of all time, and that might be true because of how many military service men and women have carried one of these. In fact, in the video, they talk about a guy who like performed a root canal or something on himself using this. It's a really weird story, but that's the kind of stuff you get when you're as deployed to the military as the Gerber 06 Auto. It's got a really big button and a really big switch. Great for gloves. It's big, it's beefy, it's got this strike pommel. It's a tactical knife through and through, and it belongs on the battlefield. And that is why it is the last one in our tactical series and the last automatic knife on the table. That's a lot of automatic knives, everybody. I hope that you found something on the table that you like, or at least found the inspiration, found what you need to look for for the perfect automatic knife for your needs. Anyway, we hope you've enjoyed. Subscribe for more knife content. We'll see you on the next one.